I wanted to show you a microeconomic model of the tragedy of the commons. And this model goes right along with the classic story where you have some town with a common area for people to graze their cows. And of course what happens is that everybody lets their cows graze way too much and therefore the supply of grass depletes, it doesn't replenish, so they lose the commons. It just becomes like a dirt pile rather than an actual commons with grass where people can graze their cows. So here's the setup. We have each individual in the town deciding how much grazing of one's cows do you allow. That's their choice variable. And their objective function is that they care about their cow's well-being, or maybe this is they care about milk or something like that. And the cow's well-being is a function of how much they let their cows, the subscript I is one individual's cows, how much do they let their cows graze in the common ground? That's the benefit. The cost, of course, is the degradation of the commons. How much is the commons depleted by their one cow grazing in that area? And of course, the degradation of the commons is a function of the total amount of grazing in the town where grazing is equal to just the sum of everybody's individual decision about how much to graze their cows. In which case, the total grazing is a function of how much you personally choose to let your cows graze in that land. In which case, the total grazing that happens is a function of how much you personally allow your cows to graze in that land. But the trick here is that we have a drop in the bucket problem. And of course, we're going to represent that drop in the bucket problem using calculus. So specifically, the elasticity of the total amount of cow grazing on the commons with respect to the amount of grazing that you allow your cows to do is very, very small. Your cows don't graze that much relative to the whole. So the cost to you personally of grazing your cows, this is really, really small. And the benefit is really big. And that's the characteristic of the tragedy of the commons, is that there's a high benefit to you, and there's a low cost of your personal cows to, to you or to the group. However, when you add up everybody's behavior in total when they optimize this thing, you get a huge effect on the degradation of the commons, such that the cost becomes big, not because of your individual behavior, but because everybody is making this same decision. And of course, there's lots of situations that sort of follow this model. You can think about uh, fisheries where people are overfishing land. Lots of situations where you're depleting a resource follow this setup. But of course, this applies in situations that you wouldn't necessarily associate with tragedy of the commons. For example, what about misinformation? Um, so a lot of misinformation, the individual putting out that misinformation, they have a benefit to themselves, which is whatever prestige they gain from putting out something shocking or putting out something that exaggerates or whatever. And the cost is actually the cost to the total epistemic commons, where epistemic is sort of how do we know what information is true. And you can kind of think of this as the one piece of misinformation is polluting the entire epistemic commons environment. But the one piece of misinformation out there itself, that doesn't have a huge effect on the degradation of the information environment. It's the fact that so many people have this incentive to put out misinformation or to exaggerate or whatever, that the total uh, result of that is a degradation of the information environment that we all live in. The key here is that the benefit is to the individual and that's a pretty big benefit. The cost is to the group, but it's not the individual's behavior that, that adds to this cost. It's the collective sum of everybody's behavior that makes the cost so great. And that also makes it like a prisoner's dilemma. So let me show you that. Here we have a prisoner's dilemma where the two options are either you graze your cows or you don't for both players. And of course, both players in this setup have a dominant strategy of grazing their cows, even though both players would be better off if neither grazed.
Now, of course, this setup, the, the microeconomic theory model, actually allows for an amount of grazing. And you might imagine there's an optimal amount of grazing, which is way less than people will actually choose. It's not zero. So this doesn't perfectly translate, but it actually might translate if we let, instead of don't graze at all, if we let this be graze the optimal amount according to the, the optimal solution. If everybody grazed this amount, the grass would replenish at the right rate. We could figure that out. We could actually solve that. I won't do that here, but we could. And in which case, it's definitely a prisoner's dilemma. Now, I will also acknowledge that this is a two-player game and you would need to scale this up to a multiplayer game. That's also possible, but I won't do it in this video. This video really is just about what is the tragedy of the commons and what does it look like for microeconomists.